Bolsover Castle is a Stuart mansion, a fantasy hilltop pleasure palace of a horsemad cavalier playboy, William Cavendish. The castle was founded in the late 11th century by William Peverell, one of William the Conqueror's knights, and became crown property in 1155 when William Peverell the Younger died, despite the claim of the de Ferris family who were Earls of Derby. In 1173, a group of barons led by King Henry II's sons, Henry, the young king, Geoffrey, Duke of Brittany, and Prince Richard, later Richard the Lionheart, revolted against the king's rule. Henry spent £116 on building at the castles of Bolsover and Peverell in Derbyshire. The vast terrace range we're looking at now, overlooking the Vale of Scarsdale, was created by Sir William Cavendish. Now, a dramatic roofless shell, this was once a range of stately rooms that formed the entrance to Bolsover Castle. From the ruins, it is still possible to imagine the grand dining room, long gallery and basement kitchen. King John ascended to the throne in 1199 after the death of his brother, Richard the Lionheart. William de Ferris maintained the claim of the Earls of Derby to the Peverell Estates. He paid John 2,000 marks for the Lordship of the Peak, but the Crown retained possession of Bolsover and Peverell castles. John finally gave them to de Ferris in 1216 to secure his support in the face of rebellion. However, the Castilian Brian de Lysel refused to hand them over, although de Lysel and de Ferris were both John's supporters. John gave de Ferris permission to use force to take the castles. The situation was still chaotic when Henry III became king after his father's death in 1216. Bolsover fell to de Ferris' forces in 1217 after a siege. In 1223, the castle was returned to Crown control, and £33 was spent on repairing the damage the Earl of Derby had caused when capturing the castle six years earlier. Over the next 20 years, four towers were added, the keep was repaired, various parts of the curtain wall were repaired, and a kitchen and barn were built, all at a cost of £181. From 1290 onwards, the castle and its surrounding manor were granted to a series of local farmers. Under their custodianship, the castle gradually fell into a state of disrepair. King Edward VI granted Bolsover Castle to Francis Talbot the 5th Earl of Shrewsbury, in 1553. His son, the 6th Earl, was keeper of Mary Queen of Scots at Chatsworth. In fact, it was suspected that in 1574, two Scottish servants in the stable, Alexander Hamilton 
and John Stewart were carrying letters secretly to Mary. When the 6th Earl of Shrewsbury died in 1590, his son Gilbert, the 7th Earl, showed little interest and sold the ruins of Boltsover Castle to Sir Charles Cavendish, who wanted to build a new castle on the site. Working with the famous builder and designer, Robert Smithson, Cavendish's castle was designed for elegant living rather than defence and was unfinished at the time of the two men's death in 1614 and in 1617. Accounts survive for building the early stages of the little castle. Unusually for this period, female labour was recorded and the women's names or husbands' names are given. The building of the castle was continued by Cavendish's two sons, William and John, who were influenced by the Italian-inspired work of the architect Nigo Jones. The tower, known today as the Little Castle, was completed around 1621. However, construction was interrupted by the civil wars of 1642 to 1651, during which the castle was taken by the parliamentarians, who slighted it, when it fell into a ruinous state. After the restoration of the monarchy, William Cavendish, who was created Marquess of Newcastle in 1643 and the Duke of newcastle Pontine in 1665, added a new hall and state rooms to the terrace range, and by the time of his death in 1676, the castle had been restored to good order. The main usage of the building extended for over 20 years and it is presumed that the family lived at the castle towards the end of that period. It then passed through Margaret Bentinck, Duchess of Portland, into the Bentinck family and ultimately became one of the seats of the Earls and Dukes of Portland. After 1883 the castle was uninhabited and in 1945 it was given to the nation by the 7th Duke of Portland. The Ministry of Works stabilised the building and began opening portions to visitations by the public. Today, the castle is in the care of English heritage and operated as a tourist attraction. Many of the rooms throughout the little castle at Bolsover are elaborately decorated with wall paintings which are rare survivals from the early 17th century. While the original artists are unknown, all the painted themes throughout the building were completed during Sir William Cavendish's time, and particularly beautiful examples exist in the Heaven and Elysium closets. These small rooms opened off William Cavendish's bedchamber and were extremely private places into which only the most privileged would have been invited.
While restoring the panels in the star chamber, witch marks were discovered by the windows. These markings were believed to suck in witches as they tried to enter in through the window. The ceiling of the Heaven Closet features a painting of the Ascension, dated from 1619 and depicting angels surrounding the Ascension figure of Christ. The subject matter, with its Catholic associations, despite William's professed inconsistency in religious matters, could have been inspired by William's travels on the continent. Due to the complex and varied nature of the wall paintings such as those seen at Bolsover, many are at risk of serious deterioration due to factors such as climate, poor past restoration work or the nature of the historic buildings on which they are fixed. English Heritage has recently launched Save Our Story, an appeal to support the conservation of the many wall paintings in their care and to protect them from the risk of permanent loss in the future, something we should all support. Castle's kitchen is fascinating to explore and gives you great insight into a functioning kitchen of the 17th century. If you look closely, you can see the channels in the floor for blood to flow away and wear marks on steps and worktops. For the first time in almost 250 years, you can now stroll along Bolsover Castle's restored wall walk. With stunning countryside views and the fountain garden down below, the circular walls go right around the garden, allowing panoramic views over Bolsover Castle grounds and the Vale of Scarsdale. The fountain garden was designed around the statue of Venus, goddess of love and pleasure emerging from her bath. It included a secluded chamber for intimate banquets set into the garden wall, with reglazed original windows and new hand carved doors. The 
The interior of the riding house was built in the 1660s by William Cavendish. William Cavendish is widely credited as being the father of modern dressage. The Royal Horse Master and First Duke of Newcastle introduced the highly skilled art in the 17th century. Today, you can watch horses being trained at the pillar. The white post Sir William used to encourage the horses to move in ever decreasing circles. He was also known for using kinder training techniques than many of his contemporaries. In the old stables you can see artefacts from the 17th century. Most prominent is the original door that once led onto the walk walk. The cistern house had three storeys with a tank on the top floor, which fed water down through lead pipes to feed water to the fountain. Over Castle is simply stunning, with an elegance that sweeps you back to the 17th century. There is so much to see that it is easy to spend the day exploring. Throughout the year, the castle holds multiple events, which makes the castle even more appealing to visit, and I will certainly be revisiting.